This is part 62 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss inheritance in JavaScript with examples. Object-oriented programming languages support inheritance. Since JavaScript is also an object-oriented programming language, it supports inheritance. In object-oriented programming languages like C-sharp and Java, to implement inheritance, we make a class inherit from another class. In JavaScript, we don't have the concept of classes, so inheritance in JavaScript is said to be prototype based. This means to implement inheritance in JavaScript, an object inherits from another object. Let's understand this with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So first let's go ahead and create um, a constructor function to construct an employee object. So at the moment, you know, we have an employee object and it has got one public field that is name. Now to this employee object, let's add a function. Get name is going to be the name of the function. And this function is simply going to return the name of the employee. Now let's create another constructor function which is going to create a permanent employee. All right, so at the moment, We've got two constructor functions, employee and permanent employee. This constructor function is going to construct an employee object, and this one is going to construct a permanent employee object. Now, this employee object is going to be the base type. So all the properties common to different types of employees will be present in this constructor function. And then here, you know, this permanent employee object will have only the property is specific to permanent employee. For example, annual salary is specific to permanent employee. That's why that field is present here. Whereas name is common to all types of employees, that is permanent employee, contract employee, etc. Now, what we want to do is associate the employee object as the parent for permanent employee. And to do that, we use the prototype property. So first, let's go ahead and create an employee object. So var employee equals new employee. So basically, we are using this constructor function to create an object of type employee. And then let's pass mark as the name of the employee. Now, we want this object to be acting as the parent for permanent employee. So, permanent employee dot prototype equals employee. So now, employee is going to be the parent for permanent employee. So now, let's go ahead and create an instance of permanent employee. So where, let's call this PE equals new permanent employee. And then look at this. This constructor expects annual salary. Let's pass 50,000 as the annual salary. Now look at this. Permanent employee and employee are related through inheritance. So permanent employee object should be able to access the methods that are defined in employee constructor function. So basically, employee object has got get name function. But look at the permanent employee it doesn't have get name function but i should still be able to call get name function using the permanent employee object that's because permanent employee and employee type are related to each other through inheritance and this is where that relationship is established so now let's write this to the web page So let's save the changes, load the page, and it should print mark. Now we can also check the type of you know this object. So for example, let's alert this. Alert P 
instance of employee. Now keep in mind permanent employee is derived from employee. Right? So here is that association. So this should actually return true. Let's reload the page. Notice that it says true because you know permanent employee is a type of employee. And similarly, when we say PE is instance of permanent employee, the actual type of that permanent employee is permanent employee. Right? So even this is going to return true. So notice that it again returns true. And this is the same example which we just discussed. Now if you add a new method to the parent object, it becomes automatically available in the derived object. So at the moment, look at this within the parent type, that is our employee object, we have one function. Now if I'm going to add another function, let's say employee.prototype, dot let's call this get name length basically we want to find the number of characters in the name of the employee so this is going to return this dot name dot length and here let's go ahead and call p dot look at that the intelligence immediately shows the name of the function which is get name length which we have just added to the employee object and it's automatically available within the derived object that is permanent employee object so let's save these changes and let's reload this and notice that it prints four that are, that is there are four characters in the name of the employee And there is this method called has own property, which we can use to determine if a property is actually defined on the actual object or its prototype. So if you look at, for example, this name property, this is defined on the employee object, whereas annual salary property is defined on permanent employee. Now if you look at permanent employee object, it has access to both name and annual salary. Now for some reason if you want to determine whether if uh, you know the properties belong to permanent employee or to its prototype you can use this method has own property method. So let's actually try to document dot write. Now we have the employee object so let's actually print this text employee dot name colon plus employee dot has own property name. So basically if this method returns true then we know that that property is defined on the employee object otherwise it's not. It belongs to the prototype. So now let's include another line here. So similarly, we have annual salary. So employee dot annual salary is that defined on the employee type? And let's include another HTML break here. So now let's reload this and see what output we get. So look at that. Name property is defined on the employee object, so it returns true, whereas annual salary belong to the prototype, that is the parent, so that's why it returns false. On the other hand, if we say, okay, is PE, that is permanent employee object, does it have So let's create an instance of permanent employee. We don't have that instance already. So var PE equals new permanent employee and let's pass 5000. And now when we use this PE.hasOwn property annual salary, this should return true. And let's update this label as well here. So now when we reload this Notice that perm permanent employee dot annual salary is defined on that, so that's why it says true. 
So basically, the way this works is when we call, you know, get name function on the derived type. That is, when we say, you know, p dot get name. So basically, this function is not defined in the permanent employee object. So it's first going to check that object. Okay, do I have get name function? If it doesn't find it, then it checks if there is a prototype involved. If there is a prototype, it checks, you know, the prototype is the employee object. So it goes to the employee object and checks, okay, do the employee object has get name and it finds it there, so that's why it invokes it. If it is not found even in the employee object, then you know it, it throws an undefined error. So for example, if we comment, you know, this line right here. So get name function cannot be found now within the permanent employee object as well as within the employee object. So when we actually load this, it's going to throw an error. Look at that object doesn't support property or method get name. So basically it throws an undefined error. If you throw in a breakpoint here and then run this in debug mode, you can actually see that you know get name is undefined. Thank you for listening and have a great day.